13. Drug use study are normally carried out in order to glimpse the increase or decrease in the consumption of different types of drugs, which make it possible to analyze the use of different types of medication and use them as a tool to promote the rational use of drugs. Mental health disorder is a global health issue which affects the quality of life of the ill individuals and their family, but also leads to a serious social consequences and economical cost for a country. In Europe, the mental health disorder are the most common cause of disability. The use of psychotropic drugs is a global problem, a vision for several decades that must be considered when trying to rationalize their use. The constant growth of its consumption observed in several countries and the recognition of a psychological factor in almost all pathologies leads to the need to estimate its dispensing in community pharmacies. In this way, the pharmacist can inform about the appropriate use of psychotropic drugs, preventing their abuse and their side effects. In fact, exercising his role as a health educator. <clears throat> Likewise, no one can ignore the addictive power that some of these drugs have, such as benzodiazepine as well as the fact that they must be used for a short-term treatment and well-defined diagnostic psychopathological cases. In addition, these studies can be used for the promotion and evaluation of the educational effort associated with rational pharmacotherapy. Due to the lack of data, of the, on the consumption of these drugs in the region, the objective of this study is to show the, the evolution of the prescription of psychotropic drugs in this place during the decade from 2004 to 2013, compared with other regions in order to find similarities and differences, which will allow acting in this regard. In this way, we can try to study the prevalence, type and pattern of consumption, as well as find out if there is an, an appropriate use. Otherwise, we can warn of irrational use and act properly. A descriptive observational study of outpatient resident in the northeast region of Argentina was carried out. The region is made up of four provinces, with a total population approximately of 3,300,000, according to the data from the 2000 National Census. We can see the map, the province of Formosa, Chaco, Misiones, and Corrientes, where I live. In order to analyze the consumption of psychotropic drugs, they were classified according to the World Health Organization Anatomical, Therapeutic, and Chemical Classification System in antipsychotics N05A, ansiolytics N05B, and antidepressant N06A, and expresses as defined dilated doses, DDD. The data were obtained from three medicine suppliers that provide 80% of the medicine used in the region. 
This type of data was chosen because of it is easier to obtain since there were only four providers of medicine in the region, while according to the survey carried out by the Argentinian Pharmaceutical Association, there were 1,293 pharmacies in the region, which make it difficult to collect the desired data. Also, because of such an extensive time range, there were many pharmacies that were out of business and others that began their activities. So the search for data in them would become, become even more difficult. Although the amount of data and the speed of collection is gained, we must recognize that there, are, there were data that we cannot access, such as age range of use, the specialties of physician who prescribe them, and the diagnosis for which they make the prescription. In addition, after the national crisis of 2000, the country's pharmacies were with critical stop in view of the lack of predictability. So it can be deduced that there is a correlation between the distribution and the sale of medicines. Finally, all the drug addresses cannot be sold without a medical prescription, and the pharmacist must archive that according to the Argentinian law. They are not over the counter, so there would be no possibility of cell consumption. Any patient must go to a doctor before getting it. We will see figure one that shows the evolution of consumption of psychotropic drugs during the time study. We can observe a growing use of psychoactive drugs throughout the decade in order of 30.33%. It is possible to see a wide predominance in the use of ansiolytics. Given that in the same period the population increased by 8.98%, it is evident that there is a significant increase in the consumption of psychotropic drugs in the region in a greater proportion, proportion that, than that observed in some other others, but although less than other studies. The figure shows a couple of occasions, such as in 2005, when the consumption decreased by 8.28%, and 2011, when the drop was 7.82%. The market difference we find in those years is that they match with the relative social and economic stability of the country. This may influence in the use of drug mentioning in view of the fact that there are several studies which have shown that in an unfavorable, unfavorable socioeconomic situation and stress, as a counterpart, there is a market increase in the consumption of psychotropic drugs, as occurred in COVID-19 pandemic. Table 1 shows the drug distributed in the region during the decade covered by the study, discriminated by years and pharma pharmacological group already defined. As we could see in Figure 1, there is a wide predominance in use of ansiolytic with 67.42%, followed by antidepressants, 23.19%. This was observed by other authors, national and foreign. In third place appear antipsychotics, 9.39%. If we consider by therapeutic groups, we observe that among ansiolytics, there was an increase of 30.25% among antidepressants of 24.62%, 24, 24 
while among antipsychotic the increase was in of the order of 48 85%. We can observe a pronounced increase in the consumption of antipsychotics. It could be due to their new uses, especially the so-called atypical one. There are studies where it is verified that the recommendation for the use the use of psychotropic drugs had been made by, by a non-medical professional using the term self-consumption and the prescription of some anxiolytics is carried out by mostly by physicians who are not psychiatrists which could indicate the use outside the control of the ideal professional. They also mentioned that many patients receive inadequate treatment given that diagnosis of depression and psychosis show prescription for benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine. To this data, we must point out in a, study, in a study of the Ministry of Health of Argentina, where it is observed that the most prevalent mental health pathology is major depressive disorder, only surpassed by addiction but five times greater than any other diagnosis of anxiety. So it is possible to observe a great problem in use. Table 2 shows the anxiolytic use during the decade study. We see a marked predominance of alprazolam. In second place appeared clonazepam and then promazepam. Likewise, the least used drugs are ketazolam and estazolam. Regarding the use of anxiolytics, another Argentinian study carried out during four months of 2003 shows alprazolam as the most used drugs. Bromazepam appears in fourth place and there were no data on clonazepam. The predominance of alprazolam and clonazepam in anxiolytics is due to the fact that they are more modern drugs, as was also observed by other authors. Although in other national works, diazepam appeared in third place and the use of clonazepam is not predominantly found. However, there are another work where other anxiolytics are the most used, such as lorazepam, follow, followed by alprazolam and diazepam in third place, as was found in the city of Buenos Aires. We must emphasize that the market increase in the consumption of clonazepam is contrary to what was has been observed in those studies. We must consider that the prescription habit have changed or they were, they, they were different among other places in the country. It should be noted that although in total figures clonazepam represent 65.37% of DDD of alprazolam, we must study this relationship in view that at the beginning it was that relationship was 42.48% and at the end the gap was reduced since the DDD of clonazepam represents 71.51% respect to those of alprazolam. The gap was reduced by more than 30%. About antidepressant, table 3 shows the total consumption during the time selected. Here, here we have a predominance of fluoxetine, followed, followed by melafaxin, sertraline, and paroxetine. Of the tricyclic antidepressant, we have amitriptyline and chlorimipramine. The least used drugs here are miasarin and riboxetine. Regarding the antidepressant, the market dominance of fluoxetine was also observed in other, by other authors in view of 
its lower potency of side effects, followed, followed by the lapaxin, sertraline, and paroxetine. While <clears throat> that in, order, in other studies, the predominance of this same drug is observed, but in a different order. They all are moderate antidepressant, which is why many authors have marked the increase in their use. The trend of decreased use of tricyclic antidepressant is also pointed out by other authors. Although it does not appear in the last places in general figures, Franciprimine is the only antidepressant of which no dose was distributed in 2012 and 2013, accentuating its tendency to decrease consumption due to its side effects and dietary care. Table 4 shows the antipsychotics consumed throughout the mentioned decade, where the predominance of risperidone is observed, followed by olanzapine and aloperidone. In, in contrast, the least used drugs are, were clozapine and amisulpril. Among the antipsychotics, we observe that risperidone predominates in view of its multiple uses, not only for psychosis, but also for some anxiety disorders, such as obsessive compulsive disorder. The olanzapine has also shown efficacy in other pathologies, such as bipolar disorder. We must highlight that our result of use of alloperidol and antipsychotics of the so-called typical were found in other studies. We also must emphasize that the most used antipsychotics or those with increasing consumption belong to the family of the so-called atypical. And the increase in their use is due to their good effectiveness the lower and the lower range of side effects and the possibility of treating the negative symptomatology of the psychosis, which was not possible with the classics. As a counterpart, we observe a decrease in the so-called typical or classic, as observed in other studies. In contrast, the least used drugs are amisulpril and clozapine in view of its prescription and dispensing restrictions since it is found in the National Pharmacovigilance Program. Conclusions. The work shows an alarming growing consumption of psychotropic drugs in more than three times the population growth in the time study. It should also serve as an alert in view of the fact that anxiolytics are the most used drugs when the most prevalent diagnosis in the country is major depressive disorder. This can happen due to the predominance of non-specialist physicians who prescribe ansiolytics and or because patients obtain them without medical supervision. We can observe the predominance of ansiolytics is common in many countries and even in other places in our country, as the results show us similar even in the type of molecule chosen for the pharmacotherapeutic approach. There is a tendency to use a modern molecules to the detriment of the classic ones in view of the lower potential for complication and increased potency. Also to the use of other spectrum of treatment, like the use of atypical antipsychotics in the approach of negative symptomatology in psychosis, as well as other pathologies, 
such as anxiety disorders and bipolar disorder. It is possible to elucidate a decrease in the consumption of psychotropic drugs in time of socioeconomic prosperity and as its counterpart, an increase in economical crisis. I would like to finish my conference with the beautiful landscape of my city. It is a bridge that bears the name of the creator of Argentine flags, Manuel Belgrano, and links my province with the neighboring province of Chaco. I choose a bridge because if we consider the physician is one of the coastline and the other is the patient, we, the pharmacists, are that bridge to achieve the supreme objective of health science, which is to improve the quality of life of population. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. This brings us to the end of the conference. Uh, there were some really nice uh, conversations that the presentations and the researches had sparked. And this definitely is going to lead to a lot of new collaborations and a lot of new ideation. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, acknowledge that you all must have had a great time. Uh, we have come to the end of the event. And at this time, I would like to extend all our gratitude for the speakers, the delegates, honorable guests, and our well-wishers who had spared their time to make this event successful. I'm very, very thankful and I, I appreciate that I was given the chance to host and moderate this conference. I would like to take this opportunity to announce the upcoming series of Pharmaceuticals and Clinical Research Conference on November 20th, 21st, 2023 at Dubai, UAE. Once again, we extend our sincere gratitude to all and we would wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you so much and have a great night.